Welcome to Never Again is Now, a podcast about anti-Semitism. And if you listened to us before, welcome back. I'm Evelyn Marcus. And I'm Phyllis Simbler Miller. The culture of memory is crucial to honor people in the past, to cope with our grief, and to inspire us to build a better future. Today we're honored and thrilled to have a very special guest, the design architect who created several of the world's most important monuments and whose vision has transformed the way we commemorate major events in recent history. Daniel Liebeskind is a Polish-American architect, artist, professor, and set designer. He founded studio Daniel Liebeskind in 1989 with his wife Nina and is its principal design architect. Included in the studio's numerous award-winning designs are the 9-11 Ground Zero Master Plan, Jewish Museum Berlin, and the Dutch Holocaust Memorial of Names in Amsterdam. This outdoor memorial in the old Jewish quarter of Amsterdam honors the 102,000 Dutch Jewish victims and the 220 Dutch Sinti and Roma victims of Nazi Germany. Following the mass murder in October 2018 at the Tree of Life Synagogue in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Daniel Liebeskind's design was chosen for the synagogue's site. Daniel, welcome. It's an immense honor to have you on our show. Thank you so much. And we're super excited to discuss your vision behind your memorials with Thank you. you. Very happy to be with you. Thank you. Daniel. Um, Phyllis met, met you and your wife Nina by chance in May of this year at your designed Dutch Holocaust Memorial of Names in Amsterdam. What, what did it mean to you personally to design this memorial? Well, it means a lot because we know only some stories uh, of the Holocaust coming from Amsterdam, uh, from, from Holland. Uh, we know the story of Anne Frank, for example. But when I started working on the Monument of Names in Amsterdam, I realized that there were other Anne Franks. There were younger Anne Franks and older Anne Franks. And so this monument is really an encounter with a history that is difficult for us to absorb. How can we understand that hundreds of thousands of people, Jews, Roma, Sinti, were murdered because of who they were? Children, older people, women, old men, just unfathomable. So it meant a lot to me to to tackle this design because it's so important to let people understand where they are, what happened in their city, what happened in the beautiful cap, beautiful city of Amsterdam, and and have a different look at humanity and 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 the consequences of genocide and what does it mean for us today? It's not just the past. It's it's what we do today. Yeah. Yes. And and. I can add that um, for us as Dutch Jews uh, in Amsterdam and 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 elsewhere in the Netherlands, you know, we come to that monument. Every person that was murdered in our from our families um, mm. has its own brick in you know its own brick stone yes. with his or her name on it and his or her age of uh, being murdered uh, yes. which they were murdered and and to us and i've heard this f- from many uh, of my fellow dutch jews it's like they got finally a gravestone you know that that's yeah that's what you provide it, for us it's true i think what is very important is the name that each name and there are also many empty bricks because there will be other names that we will discover in time i'm sure of that but uh, it's it's very important to have a name of the person that you can actually encounter. You can, you can look at that name. You might not know who she was, who he was, uh, but you see the age at the time of murder and you begin to think about all those bricks and, and all the meaning of those bricks. And you begin to think of memory itself because the, the, the Hebrew letters in memory, which is really the organizing element of this uh, monument, you walk through really quite literally the, the 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 Hebrew word in memory of, of course, Zachor, Lezacher, 
uh, those are key key ideas, not just for Jews, but for everyone to remember, because without that, we'd really not know who we were, who, who we are going to be. Yes, and, and for those who haven't been there, um, if you would look at the monument from above, from the sky, you you would see silver or, or mirrored uh, in, in in mirrors. You would see the word lezeger. So that's what you see now when you would fly over the city of Amsterdam. You see this monument saying lezeger. Well, on. what is important to me, it, it was not really you know the Hebrew uh, alphabet, Hebrew letters are sacred in themselves. Uh, they are not just like uh, Latin letters or Greek letters. Each of the letters has a immense symbolic and emotional character. So you don't really have to read the letter. You have to walk through the letter. Walking through the letter, walking through memory, is quite literally uh, the act of finding a name on one of those bricks or, or other names on the brick. So yes, it's 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 a, a experience because of course that stainless steel reflection and the kind of mirroring effect of the entire city around it. Uh, you know, this is probably the only memorial I know which reflects what is around it. Uh, as if the city which is up above in reflection is an illusory city when it comes to names which are represented down below in those foundational walls, brick walls that are so common in Amsterdam and in Holland. So anyway, it's an experience. It's, it's hard to put it all into words. Uh, it's, it's, it's a physical, emotional, uh, intellectual experience. I just want to add to make it clear to our visitors that it is outside. There's no admission. You don't have to pay to see this, which I think is very important. And it's on a very busy corner in Amsterdam. So people walk by it all the time and walk through it all the time, which is what Daniel's describing about. It's not one solid monument. It's like, yeah. well, Daniel, you're it's, the designer. You, you explain it. Well, it's actually a public space. You know, it's a it's a public space where you can walk through that public space, and I, I've seen people walking through it, and suddenly they will stop and they will look at a brick and a name. They may not even know where they are, but suddenly they understand that the city is not just a visible city; it's the city which you don't see, the invisible city, the city of those who were there who made uh, uh, Holland successful and who were murdered at the same time, and are still there now in that. In the public space, close to the Portuguese synagogue, close to the really the site itself is where Jewish people lived. It's a Jewish neighborhood. So yeah. yes, you you have a kind of a space of encounter. Yes, and right near Rembrandt's house because he lived in the Jewish quarter when he painted, which is why yeah. so many his subjects were Jewish. So I always find that fascinating. So it's yes. it's a very special monument. But I want to switch now to some one of your other designs that I found very special. So a few years ago, my daughter, Yael Miller, and I had the opportunity to uh, visit the Jewish Museum in Berlin, the edition that you did. I mean, many people have seen, and it's an amazing uh, architectural structure. But what's fascinating is in that museum, it's not just about the Holocaust. It's also about Jewish history in Germany. So what did designing that part of the museum mean to you, the newer part? Well, I would say... The thought is the same for the monument in Amsterdam, which has names of the dead, and the Jewish Museum in Berlin, because they are not about the past only. They are always also about your present and your future. If, whether you are in the Jewish Museum or in the in the names monument in Holland in Amsterdam, you are aware of the perspective that is encountering you, coming towards you, not just from the past but from the future. So, you know, it, it, there would be really no use to memorialize something as if it was dead. We don't need that, you know, just something gone and forget about it. It's, it's, you, 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 know, you need not think about it. But what is being presented in both, and Jewish Museum, of course, about 2,000 year history in, in Germany, uh, a little different from the, from the monument in Amsterdam, but still both of them seek to engage the, the, the person the child, the family, the people who come there, in a in a in something that is so important, which is to orient themselves to the world of the past, which has created the world in which we live, and the world of the future, which is coming towards us. So, yes, I see them both as 
as urgent actions. It's not just looking backwards. If, if it were just looking backwards, I don't think I would uh, do anything of that sort. But I always look at it as a project going forward at the same time as it's looking backwards. Yes, that's that's it's very inspiring for exactly. all of us to look forward to. Um, the design plans for the Tree of Life Synagogue in Pittsburgh. Um, uh, the Tree of Life's Life Synagogue site show a revitalized complex housing, uh, a sanctuary, a museum, memorial, and center for fighting anti-Semitism, unified, unified symbolically and physically with a dramatic skylight running the length of the structure. Could you share with us? Well, it's more than, actually, it's more than a skylight. You know, first of all, the, the Tree of Life synagogue and the education center that was there, you know, we have to remember what it was. It was the first attack against Jews in, in the United States of America, attack that murdered 11 people during prayer. That's very important. This was not just a random attack of, of, of a madman. It was a calculated attack to murder Jews who were praying uh, on a Shabbat. So, you know, what, what do you do? How do you bring back something meaningful on that side. It cannot just be related to the murders. It has to be related to what is essentially deeply Jewish, uh, both in terms of religion and culture. And my idea was, you know, to go back to, you know, to light, because that's really the fundamental uh, concept that, that we read in the Bible, that, that there is darkness and then there is light. Here or in Hebrew, let there be light. Uh, that's something that that the Jews have given to the world, that the importance of light in the darkness. And so it's not just a skylight, but the entire project, the entire space and, and volume emanates really from the synagogue, from the Torah, from the center of the sanctuary, and embraces and organizes all subsequent spaces, which include meeting rooms, cafes, educational quarters, museum. Uh, places to meet, places to be, uh, a memorial space, and so on. So it, it's really about, really not just the light as, as a physical light, which of course there will be plenty of, but it's really the light that stands against darkness. And I think it'll be a very palpable experience uh, as you traverse the ver various spaces that uh, I've been able to create there. It's just about to go into construction, so you'll see it really pretty soon. I think it's a, a beautiful concept. Um, Thank you. Are you working on any other Jewish remembrance projects now? Well, yes, I am actually. Barrack 17 in Auschwitz. You know, Barrack 17 was a barrack in, exhibit in Auschwitz of the former Yugoslavia, which is, as you know, now six different countries that don't uh, get along with each other. <laughs> and and uh, I've been really asked to to create an exhibition that embraces all those new countries that were a product of the disintegration of Yugoslavia uh, and create a really a meaningful encounter in, those, in that barrack with the history of what happened to Jews, what happened to Sinti and Roma, what happened to, to children, what happened in that, You know, the story of, of the Holocaust, we will never know because it's so vast. It's, it's, it's bigger than any historian can possibly amass in a lifetime of knowledge. But within this exhibition, we will have a chance to see in a dramatic way the importance of, of these new countries and their histories, which, of course, are always uh, complicated and always uh, really uh, 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 under pressure to be revised, to make people feel a little better about those years, but no, without revisionists, we have to go to that history. And I'm, of course, working with Henry Lustiger Taylor, a great historian who's uh, interviewed so many people, who's looked at the, all the archives and the great Sarajevo uh, Haggadah, which is there. So, yes, it's a very interesting project uh, of memory and also uh, of, of the urgency as we see anti Semitism uh, sort of spreading again uh, around the world. Uh, the never again. It's easy enough to say, but we can see that that it's an endless task to eliminate such a disease, which like cancer spreads, and, and we must not allow it to spread. We must do everything possible 
And I, as an architect, that's that's what I seek to do. Yes, and that's what our program um, tries to do. So we're, that's why we're thrilled that you're on. And I will tell you, just to add a little humor to this podcast, that I bought a children's puzzle for four and above of Europe. And one of the things that I'm trying to memorize is all those countries in the correct <laughs> order that used to be Yugoslavia. <laughs> and I'm doing okay. A four-year <laughs> might do it better. Yeah. It's true. It's you know, the Balkans. You know, people forget where they are with Bosnia, Herzegovina, and all the different uh, you know countries that are there now. But uh, it's it's a piece of history, and it's a piece of human history. And what I'm seeking to do is make it palpable to people, get it out of the statistics, which are incomprehensible. When you talk about millions of murdered people, and 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 encounter you know. Uh, a child who was famous as an actress and, and was uh, finally, uh, you know, murdered uh, in the camp. So it, it's a very interesting, it's also a story of, of resilience. There are the, 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 the fighters uh, who fought against the Nazis, uh, partisans. And yes. so there are many stories. And then it's a small project, but a very important one for me. Yeah. Do you have a personal history or a family history that relates to all these monuments somehow? Or... or did you well, you know, I, I, your... never, I never studied the Holocaust in a library or in an archive. That's that's not what I did. I, I grew up in the in the in the ghostly uh, post Holocaust world because my parents were both Holocaust survivors. And even as a child, even though nobody spoke to us, to my sister and myself, we understood by the weight of the emptiness, by the weight of the non-existing family members. My father once counted 85 members of our family who were murdered. Uh, and we understood what it meant. We understood, and we also understood what it meant at that time. I, I, I grew up in Poland, and Poland was, of course, a communist country and, and an anti-Semitic country. And so, yeah, we, we, we learned rapidly uh, how evil the world can be, but also how to resist the evil by your actions and, and by your attitudes. And never to sort of give up or give in to to totalitarian autocratic thoughts uh, and to forgetting. So yes, uh, definitely has a lot to do with my background. And other Jewish um, remembrance projects that you would like to do in the future? You know, you have a dream list or a wish list of projects? No, you know, I, I never specialize. This is not a specialty <laughs> of mine. It just happens to be that my first building was the Jewish Museum. I never built anything before. And then I was lucky to build, you know, the Holocaust Memorial, National Memorial in Canada and Ottawa. I was able to build, uh, you know, the Jewish Museum in Denmark, where I really struggled with that amazing history of, of, of what happened to Jews uh, of Denmark, who were by and large saved to, by the people of, 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 of Denmark. Uh, and I did many projects, uh, you know, on different sites uh, of, of tragedy, which at the same time are really sites of inspiration. Look at Ground Zero. It's not just about the thousands of people who, who perished on that site, but it's also about how that foundation of memory creates a completely new New York with public spaces, with green, with a sense of the future that is more than hopeful, but it's exciting. So yes, all these projects, I'm lucky to, to, to be part of them. Um, when I fortuitously met you and Nina in Amsterdam at the memorial, she said something to me that had stuck with me for a long time. She said something about projects that are especially meaningful are ones that are the culture of memory. And that phrase, yes. I just love that phrase, culture of memory. Thank you, Nina. It's very articulate. And she's not my wife only, but really my partner. And it's true. The culture of memory. We have to, we have to give a sense. It's like a flower. You know, you cannot just have a flower right away. Yeah, you can have a plastic, a, a fake flower, a plastic flower. <laughs> but if you want a flower, you have to care about the seed. You have to care about the, the, the earth. You have to carry, care about how to water the plant, how to nurture the growth of a flower. And that's exactly the culture of memory. It's not there just because people tell you to remember something. It's not there because you, you go to an occasion which, which, uh, with memo, you know, it's a memorial of some sort but it has to be cultivated as part of your own soul because we all are creatures destined for memory. 
and destined to be inscribed uh, into what the Jews call the Book of Life, yes, or not to be inscribed into it, to be just eliminated and 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 totally forgotten about. So yes, uh, I think that's that's definitely cultural memory uh, is so important. It's so essential, and especially when it comes to physical monuments. Could you tell us a little yeah. bit more about the culture of memory? Yes, uh, my point is that uh, to build in public space, to build physical architecture public spaces uh, is very important because you can always on a computer delete your memory. Mm. You, if you don't want to think about it, you can just get rid of it. But creating a public space where people can come together, where people can experience a, a kind of solidarity of being together and to learn something and to remember something and to to see the urgency of it in our contemporary world. That's why I devote uh, and I'm lucky to devote myself to so many projects that, that deal with memory. Uh, in a way, every project has to deal with memory. Even just an apartment building, uh, it, it, it would be you know nothing if it did not deal with memory. But of course, memorials in particular are really the highlights of the memory that is really universal and, 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 and so important. Right. And do you have any last words that you'd like to share? I mean, what you've said is so beautiful, but is there Thank anything you. else? Well, you know, yes, I, I, I think it's very important for us to look at the contemporary world, to look at the rise of demagogues, the rise of authoritarian personalities everywhere, not in one country or another, but really globally, and to see that the, the bigotry, the xenophobia, uh, the stance against immigrants, the stance against LGBTQ, the, the stance a, a, about segregating people to those who you like and those who you don't like, is really a, an urgent fact to address. We, might, we should never accept a world of that sort. And uh, of course, democracies are vulnerable, uh, as we know from history, from recent history. Mm -hmm. uh, so my, my last thought is really, we have to fight for democracy. We have to fight for freedom and justice and liberty and not succumb to the indifference that is so poisonous and creates really the atmosphere for anti-Semitism to, to thrive. And yes. your, your monuments are certainly inspiring all of us who visit them. Um, and I want to thank you also for your deep, deep Jewish wisdom that you've put into your designs and some of your designs that are, have, that are relating to, to Jewish topics, but also I think you have a universal wisdom that you uh, add well, to thank all, you so much. all your monuments. You're, you're very means. kind. You know, none of these projects, I have to tell you, the Jewish Museum in Berlin is not for Jews. The, the name is Monument is not for Jews. Of course, Jews can come, but it's for the world. They are not made because Jews were the ones who perished, the Jews come there. It's really everyone, in a way, uh, isn't that in those shoes uh, in, 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 a, in a time that is evil. So, yes, I, I, I think they, they, of course, deal with, with Jewish uh, themes, many of them, but also really uh, ultimately with themes that, that are for everyone, relevant for whether you're Dutch or Brazilian or Russian or Israeli or Polish, it's, it's, a, it's all equal. In fact, what I wanted to say is when I saw the Jewish Museum in Berlin with my daughter, it was on a Saturday night, the long night of museums in 2003. Yes, yes. And what was exciting to us, and we really noted at the time, is how many people were at the museum who we really thought weren't Jews. I mean, there are not that many Jews in Berlin. I mean, there are a lot. Of course. But <laughs> that was what was exciting to us. Then in this yeah. long night of museums event, they, on a Saturday night, they would, uh, not all, but so many people would be at the Jewish Museum in Berlin. It was so yeah. meaningful. So and you thank spoke, you. And you well, spoke well, about um, uh, solidarity. And my partner, Rosa, and I have experienced now twice that people we know, friends of ours and, and others who uh, visited Amster Americans, who visited, Amer who visited Amsterdam, they went to the Monument of Names. And um, they they 
sent us pictures of the names of the family uh, that yeah. was, you know, that was deported and murdered, yeah. and they 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 put a, a stone there for you know as, uh, to honor yeah. them. So th that's all our personal yeah. experience already in such a short time, and yeah. uh, it means a yeah. lot to us. Thank you, thank you so much. And as and and when uh, as we in this program, there, a thought occurred to me: your monuments encourage bystanders to become upstanders because by making it real, real people and real memory, hopefully yeah. people will then carry on forward. As you said, the work, carry the work forward. That's right. That's right. It's very important to, to engage people at all levels and, and to show that this is not some sort of abstraction. It's something palpable and, and emotional and, really speaks to your, your to you the person who's who's there and uh look uh, as Eli Baizal wisely pointed out the opposite uh, of love is not hate it's indifference mm -hmm. uh such a beautiful thought yes the opposite of love is not hate it's indifference and even if someone comes onto that public space and turns around and notices a name that name might haunt them and they might that name might come to them in an unexpected way from the future and from the past at the same time exactly so we thank you for everyone for how your art and architecture inspires all of us and well, we wish you, so you, much and thank you a wonderful new jewish year and thank you so much and thank, thank you our... very much for the wonderful questions. I hope I was able to do a little bit of justice, but in any case, shout out to, to you as well. Thank you so thank much. Thank you very much. Daniel. And thank our listeners and those of us, um, those of you who want to know more about Evelyn and me and our work, you can go to Never Again Is Now podcast on YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. And as we end every episode, we say, please, without putting yourself in physical harm, speak up against anti-Semitism and all hate.